Afghanistan is entering a very critical stage with US and NATO troops withdrawing from the country. There are reports of Taliban gaining more ground while peace talks are ongoing in Doha. We spoke to Taliban spokesman Suhail Shaheen about the future of Afghanistan. Suhail Shaheen, thank you for joining us from Doha. Thank you. According to the historic U.S. Taliban deal, Washington pledged to withdraw all U.S. troops from Afghanistan by September 11. In exchange, the Taliban agreed to cut ties with terrorist groups, participate in talks with the Afghan government, and perhaps most importantly, reduce violence. But violence has actually risen in Afghanistan in, in the last few months. And uh, most people are blaming the Taliban for the surge, for the rise in violence. How do you respond to those who say that the Taliban isn't committed to peace, is not negotiating in good faith? According to the agreement that we have signed, that all uh, foreign forces should have been uh, withdrawn from Afghanistan by May 1st. But uh, they didn't uh, withdraw. And uh, President Biden said that uh, he would withdraw his forces and other foreign forces would withdraw from Afghanistan by September 11. But still, we have not uh, attacked them. Uh, and uh, about uh, the upsurge of violence, this is not uh, from our side. Yes, there are hundreds, uh, about 150 districts of Afghanistan have fallen to us. But all the forces there, they have come over to our side voluntarily. They have. No, we have not captured all those districts by fighting and by military force. Uh, so it is not possible to take 150 districts in just six weeks by fighting. So this indicates that the security forces of the Kabul administration do not trust the administration and that they do not want to continue the fighting. And they uh, believe and know the veracity of uh, the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan as, as the freedom fighters of this country, as the uh, real son of this, this country. That is why they are joining us in hundreds. Let's stick with the very crucial and important topic of troop withdrawal here for just a second, because as previously mentioned, under the U.S. Taliban a deal, all foreign troops are supposed to leave Afghanistan by September 11, the very latest. But Washington has recently announced that uh, thousands, up to 1,000 U.S. troops may remain in Afghanistan beyond that deadline to protect diplomatic missions and Kabul's international airport. The question now, of course, on everyone's mind is, if and how the, the Taliban will respond. Uh, we, we have signed the agreement with the U.S. We have been abiding by, by that agreement. We have not made any violation of the agreement. Uh, so according to the agreement, uh, they have uh, pledged a made commitment that they will withdraw all their uh, forces, military forces, trainers, uh, contractors, advisor from Afghanistan. And they will uh, close this chapter of occupation, and then we will enter another chapter of uh, reconstruction of Afghanistan, independence of Afghanistan. In that ch chapter, they are welcome in civilian uh, role. But uh, uh, if they still leave behind their troops, they, that would be a clear violation uh, on their part uh, from the agreement that they have signed on 29 February 2020. So clearly, uh, foreign troops, U.S. troops remaining in Afghanistan would be seen by the Taliban as a clear violation of uh, the agreement. Uh, what does that mean, uh, to be very specific, Suhail Shaheen? Does that mean you would retaliate? Do, do, you, do you think and do you mean that U.S. troops, foreign troops, would become a target? Uh, 
of course, if they take any action that is in violation uh, of the agreement, why we are abiding that we will not allow any uh, one to use individual to use our soil, whether he uh, he is individual or it is an entity. So they must also make their uh, true their commitment and abide by their commitments. If they didn't, then uh, we have full right of retaliation. That's clear, yes. So, so clearly a warning uh, to the U.S. and uh, foreign troops remaining in uh, Afghanistan. If they do, uh, do so, it is at their own, own risk, if I understand you correctly, Suhail Shaheen. The other question, of course, is what happens to diplomats, NGOs, and other foreign civilians living in Afghanistan? Uh, does the deadline uh, relate and appeal uh, to them as well, um, or, or are they exempt? Uh, About uh, NGO workers, diplomats, embassies, consulates, we are committed that uh, we will provide a secure environment for their uh, functioning. Uh, our people need that. And uh, we also want a good relation with all countries of the world um, in future uh, when an Islamic government is in place. Even now, we do not target embassies, consulate, uh, workers of NGOs. So that is our commitment. We uh, issued statements not once, twice, and also our spokesmen uh, made uh, remarks about that, that we are uh, not targeting uh, them. And uh, even uh, we will not uh, uh, allow anyone uh, to, to create anarchy uh, which led uh, to targeting uh, diplomats of other countries. So th that is, a, yes, uh, that is our commitment. We have made it clear to publicly. So the argument that foreign troops uh, may have to leave behind and stay in Afghanistan to protect diplomatic missions is no, not valid, if I understand you correctly. And no ongoing protection force is needed to uh, protect uh, the diplomats, yeah. the diplomatic yeah, yeah. corps. Yeah. Um, the other question. Yes, they, 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 if, they, if they say it is a threat from our side, that is why they are leaving behind uh, military forces in the country, we assure them, we make commitment that we will not uh, target. That is not uh, our goal to target embassies consulate. But rather, we will provide a secure environment for their uh, functioning. So our goal is clear, and that is uh, to end the occupation and to form an Afghan Islamic, uh, Afghan inclusive Islamic government in the country in which all Afghans will participate. Uh, so that is our goal clear about uh, uh, NGOs, uh, workers, their stops and stops, uh, even local stops, uh, Afghan working in embassies and consulates and foreign diplomats, uh, we do not uh, target them. So that's, uh, our policy is clear in this regard. Aside from protecting diplomatic missions, uh, the other rationale uh, behind leaving foreign troops uh, in Afghanistan is to protect Kabul's International Airport. As a matter of fact, Turkey has offered to continue operating and securing Kabul Airport, an offer that has been opposed by the Taliban. Why did you oppose this? Uh, because uh, we, we see uh, living of uh, forces, whether they are American forces, NATO forces, uh, in the country, while they have signed that they would withdraw all their forces from Afghanistan, that in our side means continuation of the occupation. That we do not want. We want a complete end to occupation. Yes, Turkey is a great Islamic country. We had historical relation with them. Afghanistan had historical relation. But that relation would start again 
when we have an Islamic government in Afghanistan, in an independent Afghanistan, so they, at that time, can have relation with us in many fields. And we can uh, sign any agreement which is mutually beneficial and we mutually agreed upon. But that is in a new phase. Right now, when this is the phase of occupation, all forces should withdraw from Afghanistan to close this chapter forever. And we are able to enter another chapter, a chapter of independence of Afghanistan, and have a relation with all countries of the world, particularly the Islamic country and including uh, the Turkey. So Turkish uh, troops operating in uh, Kabul and Afghanistan beyond uh, the withdrawal deadline would be a cause for a deterioration in Turkish-Afghan relations. And Turkish troops, if I understand you correctly, very much like the US troops, would become a target after the deadline if they stayed. Yeah, I think it is uh, not in the trust interest even of Turkey to, to continue that role of uh, remaining in Afghanistan while they came with NATO uh, uh, when uh, the uh, American forces invaded Afghanistan. They were part of that, though in non-combatant role, but uh, they were a part of that. Now, we are telling them all forces, not to member co uh, countries' forces in American forces should go from Afghanistan. Then we will have a new government. Then we can have uh, agreements, cooperation in various fields. Uh, so that is up to that uh, phase. Right now, uh, the occupation should come uh, completely. That is our position in policy. And we have announced this time and again. No distinction will be made uh, for foreign troops staying in Afghanistan beyond the deadline, says Suhail Shaheen. Let's uh, focus on the ongoing peace talks with the Afghan government that the Taliban is conducting in Doha at uh, the moment. Uh, the question, of course, on everyone's mind is whether the Taliban, whether you are prepared for a power sharing, a true power sharing agreement with the Afghan government and their demands to hold free and fair elections. What is your answer? That we are talking with the other uh, negotiation, other side negotiation team, and uh, any topic they bring to the table for negotiation, they are welcome. But uh, only the decision which is agreed upon by the two teams would be acceptable to us. Uh, we have not prevented them from bringing any issue or any topic uh, to the table. But uh, they should be the first discussed. And, uh, and then uh, we ha would have negotiation about that when the uh, decision is reached. And then it would be acceptable uh, to all of us. Uh, so, it is, so now, I can say right now, before the negotiation or the two teams takes their decision, so only that, that uh, the other side can bring their agenda to the table as we have the right to bring our agenda to the table for discussion. There are many Afghans who are concerned about what actually happens uh, once foreign troops leave Afghanistan. Afghan President Ghani insists that Afghan security forces are more than capable, but hundreds of Afghan security forces have actually fled the country in recent years into Pakistan, Uzbekistan, and uh, Tajikistan, and the Taliban is advancing fast, making uh, serious ground. Uh, again, the question is, under these circumstances where you seem to be holding the upper hand, whether the Taliban is actually serious about talks and dialogue. Holding dialogue and reaching a peaceful solution, it is our policy. It has not changed. And uh, we are not intending to change it.
because it is as a result of negotiation and negotiated settlement that uh, a durable peace will come to Afghanistan, that we would not have any uh, problem and uh, also stop foreign intervention, intervention in Afghanistan with all Af Afghans have participation in future government. Secondly, the recent developments and the districts falling uh, to falling to us, uh, that is uh, uh, the distrust, distrust and mistrust the security forces of the Kabul administration have regarding uh, the, the administration. They come over to our side. They say, we do not trust this uh, uh, administration. Uh, uh, this is a, a residual of uh, the occupation. So uh, even if our forces, for example, had gone over to their side, would they have rejected? Of course, they would have welcomed. That is what we are doing the same. When their force is coming uh, without any fighting, we will come then, of course. This is also one way of stopping, stopping the fighting in Afghanistan. So we assure all Afghans they should not be uh, worried about that. And all areas and districts that, we, uh, that came to under our uh, administration, we have uh, issued instruction. Our leadership has issued instruction that uh, all offices schools, markets uh, should be uh, operational and open, should remain open. So Al Shaheen, I think uh, the concerns and worries on the part of many Afghans are rooted from the experience and memories of the Taliban rule from 1996 to 2001, uh, where public executions, the banning of television, music, cinema, banning girls, uh, of over 10 to attend school were a reality. And of course, uh, the question uh, that is on the Afghan people's mind is whether the progress that has been made over uh, the last uh, years, over the last two decades, as a matter of fact, will be erased, whether the development and progress on all these fronts, including, of course, women's rights, will be erased once the, power, once the Taliban comes into power again. Can you assure them here and now that those concerns are unjustified? about the, the women's rights, whether they are a right to, to education, their right uh, to work. We don't have a problem uh, with that. We do not have any problem with that. They can have uh, access to education and also can work. But only Islamic hijab, they should observe. And the Islamic hijab is observed in many Islamic countries. The other is the, the Islamic law. We are Muslims. We believe in that. And thirdly, uh, as I said uh, earlier, and all those 150 districts that uh, uh, fell to us in the past six uh, to seven weeks, uh, our leadership has uh, issued instruction that all markets, schools, offices, Everything, even the news outlets, media outlets, social media, though they should remain operational as they were in the past. So this uh, right now and practically they are operational. So why they should have worries? Uh, those things are more as a use as a propaganda. Um, they are launching propaganda against us. They, but uh, do not reflect the ground realities in Afghanistan. So you're saying the Taliban return to power would not compromise the progress Afghanistan has made over the past two decades. That would imply and mean that the Taliban in many ways has changed their views on civil liberties over the past two decades, has it not? All liberties, all rights, which is according to the Islamic rules and law. We are giving them. Why not? Because we are Muslim. Uh, while we are going to establish an Islamic uh, government, 
And that government is based on Islamic laws. And Islamic laws have given all rights to people, whether they are men or women, uh, boys, girls, all of them. We are committed to give them. We have no problem with that. But the other is the propaganda uh, launched against us. That is baseless. That is not uh, uh, something uh, which is based on evidence which reflect, reflect uh, the ground realities. So unfortunately, we, are, we have no, do not have access to media. Uh, even this is, I think, uh, uh, the first time I am speaking to you uh, uh, for in the last 20 years, while hundreds of times you would have interviewed the other side. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the, the result of those, their spread of propaganda, our opponents, mm -hmm. that they have created such a conception uh, or misperception against us. Well, those misperceptions, as you call them, might be rooted in uh, what uh, the world has seen from 1996 to 2001. But you kept saying, and you are saying, uh, that Afghanistan is an Islamic country, something I think uh, the international community would not dispute or contest. But there are numerous Muslim countries out there, as you know, that are thriving without enforcing bans on the education of women or on recreational sports, cinema, culture, and so on and so forth. There may be some... Uh... Uh, countries, Islamic countries, but uh, there are many countries, Islamic countries right now, uh, the girl students, they observe hijab. There is a, uh, separate schools for girls. So uh, we have this uh, in many countries. So uh, if we, and uh, the Muslim people of Afghanistan have fought uh, against the, the two occupation, two invasion, one after another, uh, for two objective, to end occupation and to have an Islamic government. Of course, a government which is participated by al Afghans and uh, which uh, will pave the ground for prosperity of the people and uh, development of the country, reconstruction of the country, which will have good relation with all countries uh, of the world. So that is uh, what we want. Uh, we do not want uh, to uh, live in vacuum, but at the same time uh, that every people uh, has a right to establish a government on the basis of their uh, aspirations, our people also have uh, right to have independence, an independent country, and a government based on their uh, aspiration and their dreams. So Al Shaheen, last question. The peace talks, as the Taliban have uh, promised and announced, will be accelerated in the coming days, and they are expected to enter a very important stage. The Taliban plans to present a written peace proposal to the Afghan government very soon. What can we expect? Uh, that was a, a report uh, quoting uh, Mr. Mujahid, uh, which, uh, which uh, I contacted him. It was not true uh, that uh, about this uh, plan. Of course, we have plan, but it's not that uh, uh, we uh, it will be presented uh, here in one month. Uh, our plan is uh, one plan is that we have uh, prepared and presented our agenda to the other side. Uh, they, they know about our agenda. So uh, you can see that is a kind of uh, our plan, uh, what we want. We have already presented uh, to them. And they have uh, presented their agenda to, to us. That is why the talks are continuing here uh, in Doha. But uh, the progress is slow. We acknowledge the progress is slow. We are not happy with that uh, slow uh, motion of the uh, uh, of the uh, intra-Afghan negotiation. They should accelerate. They should expedite. Suhail Shaheen, Taliban spokesperson, thank you for joining us.